44-year-old man has been arrested after allegedly setting his new Carrollton apartment building on fire. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Patricia Vallone. We begin tonight with more on that story. Well, police announced the arrest, the arson arrest, late this afternoon. Just back from police headquarters in Palmer Park, reporter Makia Turner joins us with more details on this developing story. Makia, what's the latest? Well, today, Prince George's police have made an arrest in connection with that fatal apartment fire that claimed the lives of two residents in New Carrollton yesterday. Police have arrested this man, 44-year-old Anthony Elaine, for allegedly starting the fire. He's being charged with two counts of murder and first-degree arson. Officials confirmed that the suspect was one of three residents in the unit located in the 7600 block of Fountain Blue Drive. Now, fire investigators call this incident suspicious after witnesses said they saw the suspect flee the apartments moments before the blaze broke out. The call came in for a man who had barricaded himself inside an apartment and started a fire. When officers arrived, they found a woman on the ground suffering from serious injuries. She had jumped from the burning apartment. She was later taken to a hospital and pronounced dead. Firefighters discovered the body of a man inside the apartment. The investigation reveals that the suspect jumped from the third story balcony of that burning apartment. Police discovered him hiding in the basement of a nearby apartment building. He was taken into custody and is being treated at a local hospital with non-life threatening burns. Uh, the suspect is affiliated with a group. The group the suspect is affiliated with is called Guide Program Inc. And this is a nonprofit group that works with the mentally ill. And county police are still working to identify all the victims in this case. All right. Thank you so much, Makia. Yep. Well, meanwhile, CTV went to the scene today and spoke with neighbors who described the apartment fire as horrifying. Oh, it was horrible. I never see a fire like that before. It was coming to the roof and way high. The fire was very high. I turned around and seen all this heavy smoke coming from this apartment building and the flame was on fire and everything. And next day I looked, this guy jumped over the balcony and he tried to save himself and uh, everybody was got to screaming. And the next day I know the fire just came and uh, they started putting the fire. Fire officials say 50 residents have been displaced. According to the Red Cross, families are getting the help that they need. So eventually what we were talking about were 14 units that were affected in the building that had the fire. Of those 14, nine families found a place to stay last night, but five families needed to be helped by the American Red Cross. So what we were able to do is provide a place for them to stay, provide clothing if they needed it, food, comfort, and we're able to take care of them. And Prince George's Fire and Police Departments are continuing a dual investigation. Well, several witnesses took the stand in day one of the trial of the D.C. cop charged with killing his girlfriend and baby daughter. Richmond Phillips faces life in prison if convicted of killing Winetta and Jalen Wright. Denise Douglas has the latest from the courthouse. This is a case in which a prosecution says we have DNA evidence, we have surveillance video and other things that point to the fact that Richmond Phillips, a D.C. police officer, is the murderer. His lawyer, on the other hand, says it's all circumstantial evidence in terms of action in the courtroom today. Things got off to an emotional start. Both Winetta Wright's mother and her cousin cried on the witness stand. In fact, her cousin broke down uncontrollably at several points. She described how she was concerned about Wright going to the park at Hillcrest Heights Community Center to meet Phillips before the paternity hearing. Phillips is charged with shooting Wright in the park the summer of 2011 and then leaving their 11-month-old daughter in Wright's hot car where the child died. Phillips was having an extramarital affair with the 20-year-old. Now, ironically, both Wright's mother and cousin testified that she was infatuated with police. She dreamed of one day going into law enforcement herself. And in fact, she was in the sheriff deputies, sheriff department's explorer program at the time that she was killed. 
This case will continue tomorrow and, in fact, is expected to last about six days. For now, I'm Denise Douglas at the courthouse, CTV News. And also at the courthouse today, the Wong Carter trial continues. Carter, a former Prince George's officer, is charged with theft and misconduct for allegedly stealing guns from the department and selling them. Well, Prince George's health officials say the height of the flu season is here and all residents should get the preventative vaccine. There were two free special walk-in clinics held today and several more will, will be held in the future. CTV Sonia Srivastava has a story from Chevrolet. The flu is spreading fast across the nation. The number of cases in Maryland and in Prince George's are reaching epidemic levels. Gary Dawkins says he decided to come in after seeing reports on TV. With all the information that we've been hearing on the news about the uh, about the epidemic, and it's now an ep epidemic now, and I just wanted to take some extra precautions. Today, the county held two free clinics, one at the Chevrolet Health Center and the other at the Dyer Center in Clinton. Jacob Abodu pulled up his sleeve for the sake of himself and his co-workers. It's mostly just a small office and we can't really afford to have anybody get under the weather or bring anybody else down. The flu season lasts between four to six months and we are only halfway through it. Dr. Ernest Carter with the Prince George's Health Department says people are still hesitant about getting the vaccine. Sometimes people will get some um, symptoms that that are, maybe they'll be a little congested or something, but it does not make you sick. And it won't make you sick, especially you won't get the flu having the flu shot. Now, the flu, because you do get the flu shot, again, there are people who do get the flu despite the flu shot, but even then it's a mild aversion. Now, one of the main reasons that most adults don't get the flu vaccine is because they're scared of needles, but there are some options. You can ask certain pharmacies if they offer an intradermal needle, which is about 90% shorter than the one that they use, but also you can get the flu mist. Now, my nurse Lisa here is gonna give me the flu mist as we're on the air. And Lisa, this is pretty easy to do, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm ready if you are. Okay, I'm just going to give you half on this side. I'm going to have you sniff in one second. Very good. Half on that side. Sniff. And that's it. And we're done. The flu mist is perfect for patients like five-year-old Alan Taylor, who wasn't too happy about getting the shot. Every, every, every time they put the shot on my nose, it hurts. And with a little persuasion and the added perk of being on TV, Alan gave in, but only if I would hold his hand. How did that feel, Alan? Uh, good. It tickled? Good. In Chevrolet, Sonia Shervasva for CTV News. And for more information on future clinics, you can log on to Prince George's County MD.gov slash health. Laurel Regional Hospital will also hold a special clinic tomorrow, Tuesday, January 15th from 2 to 7 p.m. And you don't need to make an appointment. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed public information requests with a dozen Maryland counties seeking details about what it calls private prosecution programs. The ACLU has reportedly sent letters to state's attorneys in 12 counties, including Prince George's, who the group believes may have contracts with a company called Corrective Solutions. In a statement, the organization says it is concerned that local prosecutors may be getting paid to allow private firms to issue official threats to individuals. As as a way of pressuring them into paying fees and attending pricey classes to avoid criminal charges. In exchange, the ACLU believes state's attorney's offices are receiving a share of the money raised from these fees. No one in the state's attorney's office could be reached for comment as of news time. And you're watching CTV News, I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Patricia Vallone. 